my friends, we are back with the third game of Bloons Tower Defense Battles Tournament Super John Bombo style. We have uh, Arctic Frost here, who is a very good player, actually. He's got about 15,000 battle score, uh, more than a 2-to-1 win ratio, so uh, he's a very good player, and I think he's kind of underestimated as well. I think a lot of people just kind of put him off for the tournament, but I honestly think he's a pretty darn good player. So what do we have going on today? Well... First things first, let's go with Hydro Dam, starting off with this nonsense right here. We got to get our mortars up, and also he went with a couple boats. So that was kind of odd, actually. I was I was kind of wondering why he went with the boats. But uh, it's, I'm sure he has something in mind. You know, of course, you know, when you got Grape Shot and stuff, you can actually make them kind of efficient in the early game because you can get a lot of economy with him, and that's kind of the key that he's going with right now. He's thinking that uh, maybe if he gets some of these boats up... Uh, he can defend some of these early rushes, and uh, by the time he gets to level 8 or 9, he'll have a better economy than me, and he'll be able to afford a lot of those good towers that I really can't afford because I'm spending, you know, over $1,000 on my mortar right here just to survive, and then I have to get a dartling gun, and then I have to get all those other things. Well, as you can tell, his boats are pretty much rocking those uh, red balloons right there, and they're pretty darn cheap uh, overall. So I really can't complain too much right now. I really, uh... I lose a few lives in here, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal, and I'm kind of wondering why I'm not really getting any sound right now. Maybe I am, maybe I'm just messing something up, I can't really tell, but, uh, then I saw a farm, so I was wondering, you know, he's not really going very much economy, is he? Why isn't he going any economy? And then farms, so definitely a weird strategy indeed. I don't know if he was just testing things out because he thinks I'm a noob, or if he's just, uh kind of going with the flow, and he actually has a plan, maybe he plays this way, you know, everybody has a different style of gameplay, and I just don't see farms very often, because you can only really fit one, maybe two of them uh, on this map, or maybe three, but you kind of have to move around if you, get, if, if, if you fit three, you know, on that top little sandbox in the top corner there, the little sandbox up there, the sand dunes, but uh, I see he's going with some really weird combinations of towers, but it's working, I mean, look at that, I'm, I'm sending out a bunch of blue balloons, and I'm doing nothing to him, but he's got more lives than me for sure and uh, his economy's probably better than mine as well you know he's got at least that one farm and uh, the good thing about farms is it's really gonna help him out for uh, level 12 and stuff because he can just sell those farms get, get a bunch of money right when he needs it and he's got the ninja kiwi decal as well so oh my goodness he has the ninja, ki ninja kiwi decal i've been saving up for that bad boy for an extremely long time and i'm still not even close to that i think I'm like, i have like 3,000 something medallions maybe 3,300 or something i'm gonna get it eventually i'll get it i mean this game has been out for almost a year i think it's been out for over a year already uh i think and I still don't have that, so I'm, I'm get, getting here slow, but I'll, I'll eventually get to it. And uh, uh, he's going with some more farms, so he's going with some more economy. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe some black balloons, but he's got a mortar as well. So uh, pretty darn decent uh, defense right there. Two boats to clean up all anything that gets through. He's got the cannon and the mortar for the grouped balloons. And I uh, really can't do anything to him. So a very solid strategy as far as he's concerned. But he's not really rushing me with any black balloons or anything. So that means I really don't have to upgrade too many of my towers. Which is definitely a huge bonus for me. Because I don't have to upgrade any towers. Oh, there he goes. He's going with these black balloons. And now I'm realizing, okay, I have to get the mortar. I have to upgrade my darling guns. I'm actually losing a lot of lives here because I spent all my money. So it was very good that he did that, actually. Kind of, kind of weird. Uh, and I don't know if I want to get a bunch of stuff up, or I kind of notice a weakness in his defense. Maybe just, maybe I'll go for it, so level 8's coming up soon, what's the best thing to rush with on level 8? He really doesn't have that much, but if he gets a 3-0 can, I'm totally screwed, but I'm going for it! Go for that Rigor Yellow Rush, all out Rigor Yellow Rush, and he's selling his farm, he's trying to get some stuff up, but he is, is he gonna be able to get up? Oh my god, he didn't even really buy anything too much! And we were making him lose tons of lives, and he is down to 40, 30, 20, and we did it! We took him down! Oh my goodness, kind of ridiculous there, I think I just, uh, kind of caught him off guard, actually. Uh, you wouldn't really expect a Rigo Yellow Rush, I think, especially with all that stuff he had. I think he had, I think he thought he had enough defense, but he didn't. Um, but overall, still a very, very good play. Honestly, it was very close. If I uh, didn't beat him right then and there, I would have lost the game, which is kind of sad. So we got uh, a cannon here on cards. Uh, card was his map choice, which is a, a short map. So I actually did something kind of weird. I actually went with a. Attack shooter, cannon, boomerang, mortar strategy instead of the uh, the normal farm strategy. Uh, you, I would normally, based on my normal gameplay, go with a farm instead of uh, one of those little attack shooters down there. So yeah, could have made that work, maybe, I don't know. Um, I, I like farms on this level, but I decided to stray away from it this game, and uh it was kind of more of a mistake than anything else, but I also wanted to test out the tax shooter. I tested it out recently uh, in one of those other games that you guys have seen already in, the, I think it was the tournament games number two, and uh, I used the tax shooter right in the middle of this map, and it seemed like it actually did pretty darn good. I was actually very surprised by how well it actually worked, so I decided, hey, why not try it again? If you can get a ring of fire where the entire map, where the entire 
uh, length of the entire square, you can get the Ring of Fire to attack. You can't... Regrow Rainbows aren't going to do anything. Regrow Anythings aren't going to do anything. Even Regrow Ceramics are going to have a hard time getting through that. So that's why I felt like I maybe I should stick with those guys and uh, maybe get a lot of pop power with them. Hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe. Anyways, um... I have to get a three. Of course, you have to get a zero three boomerang. But sadly enough, I sold my cannon and I did not have enough popping power, and I had to go for a two three boomerang. But I just did not have enough money, and I wasted a lot of lives right there. Big noob cake move on my part. I'm sad. I'm very sad. I'm down to about 110 lives right there, and he's still got 140. And he went with a cannon actually. So uh, if I rush him with some pink balloons, maybe I could do some damage. But I don't think it's worth it. Uh, as far as economy is concerned, um, I know it's not the worst thing in the entire world to go with a couple of pinks and stuff in there, but I, I, did, I don't know. I'm just kind of newbie with those, getting those blues as fast as possible to get, those, get the extra money. Oh, my God, right now. That's what I want. I want all the money, the gooey, gooey money. Oh, delicious money. I love you, money. Oh, man, if I could marry money, I totally would. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't marry money. Uh, Amanda's too cute for that. I couldn't, I couldn't marry money over Amanda, though it's close. Not gonna lie. So, all right, I got my boomerang over there. Uh, I decided to rush him with a couple black balloons. Maybe I'll do a little bit of damage to him. Uh, he still got a lot of life. So realistically, if I don't do very much damage right now, probably not gonna hurt him until I do an all-out attack. And you know, all all that little bits do help out. And it looks like a couple black balloons are actually getting through him, and I still get a lot of economy out of this. So I'm doing pretty darn well. I'm actually I got him down to a couple lives. No no huge huge life de uh, deficit, but overall, meh. Overall, meh. And now I'm starting to realize, oh, poopsicles. Guess what I did? I really don't have very much money for a, uh, a defense on level 8, so I should probably start thinking about that. And again, this is a post-commentary, so like right now I'm just looking at myself and I'm thinking, what the heck am I doing? What am I going to do? And then I get to see a tax shooter, and I'm like, what? Why did I get a tax shooter? That was kind of silly of me. Hmm. With a 2-0 tax shooter? I guess that could help. All right, so let's go for that 3-0 tax shooter as well, I suppose. And, uh... If I wanted to rush this guy, maybe some Rigo Yellows would actually do some damage. But nope, nope, he's got a mortar over there, and that mortar's going to help out versus all those things. And then I see some Yellow Balloons in here, and I'm kind of confused by this. Rigro Blacks and Yellows, and oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I sent out way too much Economy Balloons, and there's Rigo. Oh my god, there's Rigos all over the place. Put him back on first. Come on, don't let me lose too many others. I get a can up as fast as possible, but the damage has been done, and I lost a bunch more lives. I'm really glad he didn't rush me with Rigo Yellows, because I would have lost the game for sure. For shiznit, I would have lost the game, and I'm I'm pretty darn glad that that did not happen. And he's still rushing with gigantic rushes. And my boomerang is kind of really not doing as much as it should. I'm down even more lives. So again, I just feel like a really big noob right now. I don't have very much economy. I'm only at 641 economy on top of the fact that I probably should have gotten a better tax shooter spot. And uh, uh, I kind of went with a last-ditch last cannon to make sure I survived. And uh, I'm thinking that his income is probably pretty, pretty uh, uh, good, actually. But... But here it is. He actually tells me he has 641 as well. So that is a very interesting thing, because how often do you have two people have the exact same economy? I know it probably happens every once in a while, but usually not that often, to be honest. I mean, 641 exactly. So that's kind of ridiculous, actually. And uh, we're still having a pretty hard time together. I mean, I'm around, around 12 right now, and I'm getting ready to get a Ring of Fire or something. Or go for a gigantic attack, which I do. I go for a gigantic regrow rainbow rush, and he's got two, two, three boomerangs. But usually that is not enough to defend a rush. He's going for another boomerang, and it's, oh my god, it's going to be enough. Oh my god, there's going to be enough. And we did it. We did it. We beat him the second time. Again, a very, very good game. I think if he got that 3-0 boomerang up just in time, he probably just barely missed it up the amount of money that we that he needed for that. We would have had a really, really intense game by the time we got to the end of the game because I feel like uh, I probably would have been in quite a predicament there. I probably would not have been able to afford a ring of fire or anything like that. I probably would have... Uh, lost on level 13 or 14, depending on if he spent all his money or sold his towers right away to get another attack on me. So now we're playing on Battle Park today. So this is an interesting level because if you play on low quality, you can get a lot better uh, tower placements than if you don't play on low quality. And I feel like most people, especially in the tournament, play on low quality. And uh, it really doesn't affect me that much, except for the fact that I can't fit these towers exactly where I want them. So... What are we going to do? I really want to put my Ice Tower on the right side over there, but I can't do it, so I'm just going to say, screw it, let's go for the Ice Tower on the left side here. And it's not terrible, but it's not good, but it's not terrible. Definitely not terrible, and we're going for the Snap Reese. So I'm not going to Ice Stall or anything, I'm not an Ice Noober. Um, nice, nice Goober. No, I'm not a Goober Noober. We are pretty darn uh, 
I think I'm pretty decent with ice, but I really don't use it that often. And uh, I think I'm going to start incorporating ice into my strategies a little bit more often because I, I've started to realize how good you can use them in different situations, whether it's ice shards versus a big regrow rush or uh, saving up for an arctic wind and not allowing any balloons to freaking get through that thing, especially ceramic balloons. Uh, uh, usually the biggest issue is my ceramic popping power because, of course, if I go with a ring of fire, it really doesn't have that much ceramic popping power. If I go with a cannon really doesn't have that much ceramic popping power, but the arctic wind will stop those ceramics in their tracks, but underneath that, when you got all the zebras and stuff like that, no, nah, you really can't stop them with uh, an arctic wind so easily. And uh, I'm not even sure if they get slowed down anymore. And camel balloons don't really get slowed down by that, so you do need, definitely need to stick with a couple other random towers uh, for shiznit. So I'm trying to fit my taxi in here, and I'm, I thought I could fit a taxi here, but I can't, I guess, which is very sad. So I'm upset right now. I'm thinking, oh, man, what am I going to do? I'll get a taxi down here, get him up to 3-0, and I, oh, man, I lost some lives. So poopsicles, poopsicles, poopsicles. But I am surprised because my taxi is kind of reaching some of those balloons in the top there. But it really doesn't matter that much, and uh, I'm still losing a couple lives in here. A couple lives here and there. Does it hurt me? Meh. Meh. Meh pie? I don't know. So let me tell you about my Christmas really quick. What what, what do I do for Christmas? I mean, I, it's already over, but uh, I feel like I should talk about it because I never really talked about my Christmas. I got super ridiculously busy on my Christmas. So screw this game for now for a few minutes because it's kind of at the boring part. Let's talk about my Christmas, my Christmas stuff. So first of all, my grandma is a really, really awesome person. She always helps people out whenever she can, and she does pretty intense things. She's always cooking and cleaning for us every single Christmas and Thanksgiving and all that good stuff. But uh, I really appreciate the, everything she does for us. But she also actually arranges and uh, buys everybody a joke t-shirt every year. So usually the joke t-shirts make fun of everybody. Um, you know, there's a lot of catalogs and stuff where you can buy, where you can buy the joke t-shirts. You know, uh, my mom usually gets some sort of fat joke t-shirt. My dad used to get some sort of cop joke t-shirt. And my... Um, Sister always got, like, the I'm a prissy girl type of thing, and mine were usually pretty darn random. For a while, I got the ones where I, I didn't do my homework, uh, I didn't do chores, and I it was lazy and stuff, and I don't really think that was exactly me. But uh, there's really not that much you can make fun of about me, and uh, there's some other things about other people that you can really make fun of them fairly easily. Uh, I know my uncle, he's kind of crazy about the, the alien things. He thinks that aliens are all over the place, and... Uh, keep coming here all the time and probe people and stuff, and I'm, I definitely don't believe that for shizzle. And uh, maybe I'll talk about that in, uh, in a video someday about why I don't think aliens exist or anything like that. But uh, I'll leave that for another day. Don't think I'm a total noob K because I have a lot of information about this stuff. I am a pretty big astronomy buff, and I'm not just saying uh, aliens don't exist for no reason. And also, there's kind of one of those things of uh, along the lines of uh, aliens live... Aliens do exist, but they've never been here. At least that's the way I think about it, and I think that's a totally reasonable way to think about it. And I could explain that a little bit later, but for right now, no, nah, we're not going to get into that stuff. But are you guys interested in that kind of thing? I don't know. We'll maybe check it out someday. So I go for a ring of fire and an arctic, or not an arctic wind, but just a nice tower up there. And as you can tell, doing just plain amazing so far. How can you complain with that? We're still getting a lot of economy in here. I have 750 already. He's probably got quite a quite a bit as well. He's probably got around, right around the same amount as me. I really have not been able to rush him with very many things so far. Uh, Rego Blacks and stuff, I kind of want to rush him with him, but I just don't think it's going to do any damage. So I kind of just left it out and just said, screw it. Let it happen. Let it flow. Uh, just let it go. Let it go. Get economy in here. And I'm up to about uh, 800 and... Uh, what is that? 882 or something? I think so. I can't really see it too well. But we're only in round 9, and round 10 is coming up fast, so we definitely have to start <laughs> saving up for our mortar pretty darn soon. That's pretty darn soon. We already have 900 economy, and that's a really solid number on this level. If you ever get around 1,000, you're doing really, really, really well. If you get anything lower than that, you're not, you're not lost. You don't lose automatically or anything like that. I've seen people stick with 250 in-game economy and still win games. It's kind of ridiculous, but if you have the right rushes, you can actually make it work. I've actually had a video a long time ago where I actually did that, where I... Uh, went no economy the entire game, and it was very, very sad because I love going economy, but uh, I made it work, and uh, it actually worked out pretty well, so now I'm just kind of confused on where I want to put my mortar spot, because I usually don't go mortar on this level, I usually go with the monkey villages, and monkey villages are really, really good, um, but they're too expensive, and you get less economy because of that, and uh, overall it just hurts me in the 12, 13 to 15 range, which is on this level, one of the best times to rush people. So anyways, I'm getting ready for a big Regal Rainbow Rush, just in case. Got my Ring of Fire all ready to go, and he looks like he's not wanting to really rush me. So we're kind of just chilling here, both of us. He's got a really solid defense. There's nothing I can do against him. He's got that mortar up. I got my mortar up, and we both have a really good defense. Uh, my Ring of Fire is, of course, not 
going to be perfect versus everything, but I think we will be able to defend any sort of rushes. Uh, and I'm also kind of spending my money at the perfect amount of times because look at it, just look at it, guys. I got uh, right around $2,500 at all times, and of course, you get six every six seconds you get more monies, and I kind of spend some of my monies just preparing for a Regal Rainbow Rush because. Uh, I'm keeping $2,500 almost at all times, or making sure I can get it just in time. But instead of uh, getting another Ring of Fire, if you don't need to, why not save up for an Arctic Wind? A very interesting story indeed, my friends. Get an Arctic Wind, but I'm still spending a lot of my money, and uh, I spend a lot of, I get a lot of pink balloons, I'm getting a lot of economy, I'm up to about 1200 and there we go, I see a bunch of regrowth ceramics, and I'm like, uh-oh, that's not good, we need to do something about that. So I get an Arctic Wind up, and I'm also going to get a Ring of Fire, and he's like really confused, he's like, why did you get an Arctic Wind? I don't really see Arctic Winds very often, you know, usually it's ice shards and stuff, but look at that Arctic Wind go. You cannot do anything versus me as far as balloons go, as soon as you get an Arctic Wind, and then something else that can pop balloons within its range, uh, also that need to be able to pop frozen balloons. So if you get like a 2-3 boomerang, or a 3-2 boomerang, or whatever, uh, you really don't have to worry about those anything up until Moab's. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to kind of chill with what I got. My Ring of Fire is actually reaching a lot of these balloons, and also I got a Mortar, the Mortar with Bernie stuff. So I feel like that's actually probably enough defense, but also I decided, hey, why not? Let's just make sure we get another Ring of Fire. So I'm not just stuck with my pants down in the back there, and balloons are starting to get through, and I just freak out, and I don't know what to do with my life, and I get all sad and mad, and start crying, and you guys don't want to hear me cry, so let's just make sure we don't cry, and uh, none of that bad stuff will happen to us. But I do have to start preparing for the Moabs, but I'm still going a lot of economy, which is kind of impressive, actually. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know how I got so much economy. I just feel like uh, the lack of rushes is really what allowed me to get a lot of economy today. If you rushed me a couple times, I would have had to spend a lot of my money, and my economy would probably not be quite so high. But at the same time, he would have wasted some money on those rushes, so we would have been probably about even. But right now... Look at what he's got. He's got a really solid defense in the bottom there. I have a better defense, though, I think. I think my defense is a little bit better, but my Moab Poppin' Power is definitely not as good. So this is going to get very, very intense very, very soon. Who's going to go for the first rush? Who's going to make the first move? And what's going to happen? Now, he's going for a weird rush here, guys. A couple regrow ceramics uh, non-spaced. And I feel like what he's trying to do is trying to make my uh, frag cannons... Um, multiply those guys, then by the time they get to my Arctic Wind, my Ring of Fires aren't going to be able to clean up the rest. But, the Arctic Wind is just so freaking amazing that that was pretty much no problem for us. And he's kind of testing the water. He's thinking, like, what the heck am I going to do now? He's got to rush me with some BFEs or something, but if I get those Moab Maulers up, he's pretty, pretty much screwed. And, also, there it is. He's going with the Moab. He's trying to check check the water and see what happens, or maybe just make me uh, buy the Moab Maulers, but it looks like that's what he's trying to go for, because look at that. He actually sent out non-regrows, and because of those non-regrows, it made it so his Moab was cheaper, but I did have to buy the Moab Maulers, so I had to spend a freak I had to spend 2000 freaking dollars. And level 20 is here, so I'm going for a gigantic rush. He's only got two Moab Maulers because of all those weird rushes they sent out against me, and I've got uh, one regrow Moab that comes out and two regrow BFBs, Oh, um, man, he's like, I know I can defend this. I don't know. I feel like he should be able to afford more things, but maybe those rushes really did hurt him that much. And uh, he does have a pretty reasonable defense. I mean, if he had a little bit more mob popping power, I honestly feel like he could maybe defend this, especially with the 4-2 cannon or something like that. But it looks like Moab is getting super freaking far. Can he possibly defend this? If he has ground zero or something? I hope not. Oh, my God, these things are getting so freaking far. And it looks like we are. Yes, we did it. We won three games in a row. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day.